A key component of patient assessment is a thorough medication history. This history includes the patient's use of prescription medications, over-the-counter medications, herbs, supplements, folk remedies, alcohol, tobacco, and illicit drugs. In addition to the types of medications, there should be an assessment of the drug's route of administration, frequency, dosage, and when the most recent dose was taken by the patient. It is also important to review the patient's name and the prescriber's signature. The signature may be digital in a computer-based order system. Joint Commission Patient Safety Goals require completion of a medication reconciliation process upon admission to any acute care facility. This medication reconciliation process reviews all current medication being taken by the patient whether or not ordered by the admitting physician. Review of the medication history identifies indications for the medications and whether these should be continued or changed in dose based upon the current needs of the patient. Contraindications or serious side effects with the new medications being prescribed are also taken into consideration during this process of reconciliation. One important cause of medication errors is confusion between two drugs with similar names. Current Joint Commission patient safety goals require facilities to develop a list of look-alike, sound-alike drugs to help prevent such errors. The Institute for Safe Medical Practices, ISMP, maintains an online listing of confusing drug names which includes those previously specified by the Joint Commission. Stage of life considerations are also an important aspect of any assessment. If the patient is pregnant, medications may have effects on the fetus. The greatest risk of harm from maternal drugs is in the first trimester, while the greatest concentration of maternal drugs in fetal blood occurs during the third trimester. It is important for any pregnant woman or any woman on routine medications contemplating pregnancy to be aware that self-treatment of ailments during pregnancy should be avoided. Even over-the-counter medications need to be discussed with the physician before taking them. For the first year of life, the most likely source of inadvertent drug exposure is breastfeeding. Although most drugs are lower in concentration than in the maternal blood, they still may be an issue. The drugs most likely to cross into breast milk are those that are fat-soluble, have a low molecular weight, resist ionization, or are high in maternal concentrations, the breastfeeding mother should avoid self-medication. Due to physiologic differences related to their stage of physical and neurologic development, toddlers, preschoolers, and school-aged children are more likely to have adverse responses to some substances than would an adult, but are less likely to have poor responses to others than would an adult. Children are not small adults, and simply adjusting the dosage to allow for body weight is not a scientifically sound approach to medications for this age group. It is important that the individuals prescribing and administering medications to this age group have a good understanding of the ways medications can affect an immature system. As a child grows, body configuration changes, organs become more functional, and the volume of muscle mass to fatty tissue changes. This directly affects the distribution, absorption, and elimination of substances. Development and maturation of the neurologic and endocrine systems is a long and involved process, and drugs have the potential to cause changes that will affect a child's function over a lifetime.